My name is Kent Whitfield. I'm a director of reliability at Mia Soleil. We're located in Northern California. We produce a copper indium gallium diselenide or a SIGS photovoltaic product. It's a thin film PV product. Uh, we're making this entirely in the U.S. at our Northern California facility. Uh, our product is now uh, at certified at 10% efficiency. And uh, we've been in operation for several years, but we really started to make some very significant advances in our technology starting about three years ago. Probably the key challenge that thin film or thick film, and because I really think there's a lot of commonality between crystalline silicon products and thin film, the key challenge is cost effective energy. It comes down at the end of the day, do you have a reliable product that you know is going to survive 20, 25 years in the field and produce energy uh, at some level that meets the customer's expectations? The thin film product is going to be based on what the manufacturer perceives to be their unique niche. Now, some manufacturers are going for, I want to make this as inexpensive as I possibly can. And the goal there is to go into utility scale deployments and try to get you know, the best return on investment. Now, there are other applications that might be better suited for you know, residential, maybe from an aesthetic point of view. Thin film photovoltaics tend to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing in appearance than crystalline silicon, for instance. So it depends on what the manufacturer perceives to be their unique opportunity in the marketplace. So I don't think it's just restricted to utility scale, and I don't think it's restricted to just residential or commercial. The manufacturing process that we use at Mia Soleil uh, basically deposits, deposits the active material directly onto a roll of, of uh, substrate. It's stainless steel in this case. And we actually are able to take that roll from raw material all the way through finished active photovoltaic device in one pass. We never break vacuum. We never do any other processing steps than put it through a piece of equipment that actually produces the uh, active material. And that is roll to roll. What customers need is some sense of assurance that once they make this investment, that they're going to actually be able to see, see their product you know, live for 25 years in the field. So the focus that I see now, probably within the next 10 years, is going to be on the development of standards to address issues about product reliability. In terms of testing, it kind of falls into two, two broad categories. One that's electrical safety, and the other one that's kind of focused on durability and electrical performance issues. And you'll notice I didn't use the term reliability. That's probably a third, and that's sort of our emerging realm of standardization. The approach can vary, and it's probably going to be manufacturer to manufacturer specific because we don't have a consensus set of standards that we can use today. The approach that we take at MSLA is to subject the modules to some key stresses that we know exist in the field, and then we test these products all the way until they fail. We determine what is the root cause of the failure. Do we have the ability to figure out what stress causes this failure to emerge? Can we tie that stress to something that exists in the field? And do we know the level to which ex it exists in the field? And then can we develop a relationship? And it's from the relationship between the level of stress in the field and the failure mode that we can say, OK, over 25 years, what do we think is going to happen to the product? The failures can be kind of spectacular. you know glass shattering, parts flying about. Uh, in some cases, like the fire test, where they're actually impinging the product with 1,800 degree flames for up to an hour or two, you know, you can see some pretty spectacular failures there, too, where, you know, the products will catch on fire, the glass will melt. Um, in terms of their relationship strictly to what customers should expect, we don't normally see very catastrophic issues in the field. We normally tend to see products that kind of gradually decline in their electrical performance over several years of use. Occasionally, there will be something that will be a little bit more catastrophic, but it's normally not a safety issue. We don't generally see safety issues in the field associated with strictly modules. Now, we have seen some safety concerns with installation practices that are not, not done well, and those have resulted in, in, in issues. But the modules actually have been pretty reliable. This is still a young enough industry 
that there's still a lot that needs to be done on an experimental basis in order to really achieve the kind of reliability and durability we need of products in this industry.